Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash. Today we're going to be doing my review for last night's episode of The Flash. I enjoyed the episode quite a bit, however, I do have a lot of issues with the episode. I think I have a couple of nitpicks that maybe might be similar to what you guys thought of the episode, because I've looked online, I've seen some feedback from people on Twitter and watching a couple of reviews and everything, so I kind of get the gist of what everyone is feeling and I feel like I feel a little bit similar so please stick around for the whole video to get my whole thoughts as we talk about this episode but also break it down and get into what does this mean for next episode and beyond that so if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future DC TV videos later this year okay so the start of the episode and we're going to be going through it as chronologically as possible and so we begin at the start and the episode started with some shots of space and at first I was a bit confused I was like am I watching the flash because normally it would start with say a normal scene or in the past it would start with my name is Barry Allen and I am the fastest man alive and you would have the opening monologue however this monologue wasn't by Barry and it wasn't the normal footage that we were used to seeing in the past instead this new monologue was in fact from Deathstorm and that was revealed after a while because at first I was like okay so maybe this could be Deathstorm and then when it progressed it obviously became quite clear that it was Deathstorm and actually in this opening scene we get a glimpse of Deathstorm's galaxy or wherever he came from inside this portal and it's on the screen right here it's very colorful it's very cosmic I don't know exactly what it is, however, it's revealed in the episode that basically what happened to Deathstorm was when Ronnie went up into the Singularity at the end of Season 1, all of his grief went through like the Singularity and went through a portal. As far as I realized this episode, like I could be wrong about the exact details. But then this Deathstorm figure was stuck while well, Ronnie's grief was stuck in this other alternate galaxy wherever it is and we don't get the official confirmation of is it like you know a parallel dimension or is it something greater than that well they mentioned the idea of like oh it being a different dimension but they haven't confirmed it that's why I'm not saying a hundred percent oh it's a different dimension it could just be literally a portal to teleport him to another part of the universe but obviously not in our universe but just beyond that so yeah it's very interesting and I love the way that they opened the episode I thought it was a great start to the episode considering especially that we had a week's break so we had to get caught up and we definitely got like in an exciting way and so then we cut back and we see Deathstorm and so he reveals I am Deathstorm and we see Caitlyn's reaction fun fact in some of these shots you get to see the reflection in Caitlyn's eyes of Deathstorm and his blue flames however in some of the other shots they aren't there obviously because Deathstorm is CGI and in terms of CGI I have to say I have to commend them on Deathstorm because he's very very consistent and there is a lot of detail and I think the way that he has been portrayed is much better than any CGI character that The Flash has done in the past I mean just look at last season with Fuerza didn't look very good and then you look at blood work looks pretty okay but not the best Despero in his sort of big form was pretty good probably the best one we had after Grodd but this looked most human like and most actually convincing like they ripped Deathstorm out of the comics obviously his design isn't exactly the same however he looks absolutely awesome and every time he shows up on the screen I'm getting very excited to be honest because I think he's a cool villain and I like what they're doing and how they're linking it to Caitlyn so at the start of the episode he confronts Caitlyn and basically touches her with his flames and we're like oh crap Caitlyn's dying and so at that point it cuts he tries to do it again later in the episode and basically what's revealed by the end of the episode is he's trying to make Caitlyn his bride, his sort of deaf bride and basically she's going to become similar to him and have the same kind of powers and have a similar appearance to Deathstorm but be like a female Deathstorm to this actual real Deathstorm and so Caitlyn is somehow able to resist it, she isn't getting killed like everyone else 
who Deathstorm is going afterwards. Basically, it's revealed to power Caitlyn and to make her into this new version of Deathstorm, he has to kill people. And what he feeds off is grief, and so he goes after people who are grieving. Even at one point in the episode, Captain Kramer talks to the CCPD, and she's like, okay guys, if you have grief, tell us, get off the streets, go somewhere far away, because Deathstorm is going to come after you, the streets are not safe. And as you see in this episode, the citywide lockdown that Kramer calls for isn't really in effect, because people were in like a kind of fairground or something, I don't remember exactly what it was but he kills like four people on the spot and basically recharges Caitlyn and by the end of the episode when we get to the point where Caitlyn's eyes are actually glowing blue and he somehow altered you know the kind of very being of Caitlyn the DNA inside of her and the cells specifically she is not complete and she's not ready for it says Deathstorm and so he's gonna go off he's gonna kill more people he's going to prepare Caitlyn to become his bride and I thought this was like a really interesting twist and I kind of thought something similar to this could happen especially at the start of the episode when he wasn't killing her and we all know he has an incredibly strong connection to Caitlyn and that goes vice versa it goes like the other way because with Caitlyn she had such a strong connection to Ronnie that it feels like getting him potentially back for the first time once again after all of these years it's very traumatic for her and so she's going through it all and at the same time she's kind of processing oh Deathstorm actually wants this to happen to me and I've been attacked although I haven't been literally attacked in the eyes of Deathstorm but to Caitlyn oh Deathstorm is trying to transform me against my own will just because he wants me as his kind of death bride and so throughout the episode, a couple of times after Caitlyn's been attacked, Caitlyn goes to the team and then she's like, okay, this is what happened. And I have to say, one of my complaints in this episode was some of the dialogue and the way that the episode was written. It was written like, I don't know, we're not very smart and they don't trust the audience, so they try and explain everything too much. It's a big trope that The Flash does and continues to do. But sometimes they do it better where they are a bit more subtle and it's not so in your face. But if we move on from here and talk about Cecile a little bit in this episode. So Cecile at one point is feeling all of the emotions out of literally everyone, like as she always does. Basically she goes, you know, from another room, she comes into the room, she comes into shot and she's like, okay Barry, I can feel what you're feeling right now to do with Iris. And I feel like that is another trope that I am very much so tired of because it's an excuse to verbalize our character's feelings. And that is actually a cardinal sin in filmmaking and television, explaining way too much and having so much exposition and literally speaking it rather than feeling it. Because I could see Barry's emotions from his face. I didn't need to get told by Cecile. So every time that happens, it's a bit annoying for me. And that is a nitpick that I have in regards to Cecile. Also, they keep on using her as a conduit for these villains. And so, once again, in this episode, she's taken over by Deathstorm. Obviously, this has happened by multiple villains recently. Her eyes go black and she talks, obviously, with Cecile's actress, miming what Deathstorm is saying. And once again, I don't think that is, like, the best technique to use because the dialogue doesn't actually line up always and it's a little bit funny because it kind of breaks the 4-4 I guess because you become aware of what's going on but that's just another nitpick but let's go over to the other storyline in this episode and this is a big continuing story which is to do with Iris and Sue who has been around and she's been sticking around so Iris isn't alone and Barry shows up once he gets a text saying that Iris is back. But basically what's going on is Iris just suddenly shows up out of nowhere. She is back because the last time we saw her, she disappeared. However, in this episode, at the end, she's able to control what she is doing and what she's feeling to do with her time sickness. And she's able to stay here rather than evaporate and go to wherever Tinya's mum is and wherever Dion goes to because... After a long time of waiting for Dion, Dion actually shows up in the apartment and he starts to feel sick. He couldn't even see Iris's future and he can see everyone else's future and so it seems like he is being affected too. And the big moment that emphasizes that is when he literally 
disintegrates because of the time sickness, just like Iris. So everything to do with that storyline is going down big time and I'm looking forward to seeing how it continues. I hope it doesn't drag on too long because I feel like it's been going on for such a long time now that I feel in the next couple of episodes will be a good time to start trying to wrapping up. But we'll have to wait and see as to if they will do that. But back in Star Labs, we have Esperanza who shows up and they have a confrontation, her and Allegra. They have that kind of pseudo Spanish English conversation, which once again doesn't come off as that natural, but that's a nitpick and I'm not a native speaker, so I don't know if that sounds natural to any of you guys who can speak Spanish, so let me know, would that be a thing that you would do? I know a lot of people online have nitpicked about that in the past and how they don't just kind of purely stick to Spanish or purely stick to English. But anyway, they have a fight and it turns out that this is Deathstorm messing with Allegra. Barry comes down and Barry's like, what the hell is going on here? And Allegra explains everything else. And then what precedes that is what I talked about before, with Iris basically overcoming her time sickness, at least for now. But meanwhile, at Star Labs, we have Caitlin and Frost who are kind of quarantining and locking themselves away in the speed lab. They are there to try and protect Caitlin from... Deathstorm, however, Deathstorm is able to show up inside Star Labs and he goes off to Frost. He knocks her across the room and takes Caitlyn with him and he flies into the air and somehow Barry is able to spot where exactly he is heading because of Caitlyn's GPS in her phone. But as Barry is running, he realizes, how the hell am I going to get up into the sky because Deathstorm is able to fly, he's up way high, like Barry can't just run up a building or something and try and stop him because it would be way too dangerous, number one. But he realizes that it's possible for him to kind of generate lightning, throw it into the air and actually step on it. So what he does is really cool. He steps on it, you can see this shot right here. I thought it was actually pretty awesome. Thought the music was a little tongue in cheek considering it's the exact line that he says. However, it was very good CGI, I really liked it, and I really liked that kind of wider shot of both him and Deathstorm as Deathstorm approaches the portal or where he's actually going to go. And so it's interesting to see Barry use this power. They explain it via like a lot of techno kind of scientific babble, so I didn't really understand what exactly they were saying, but I got the gist of it, and I thought it was nice that Frost had one call out in the episode being like, yeah, look, I don't know what you just said, but I know we gotta get this guy. And so over at that kind of fairground, Caitlyn is there, kneeling on the ground as Deathstorm looks around at the potential targets, and he proceeds to attack them, killing like four of them, and then going back to Caitlyn and giving her a boost of his powers once again. And she screams for like the third time in this episode and she's gone for a lot in this episode, so fair enough. But we have Barry showing up as Deathstorm goes away and Deathstorm reveals basically to Caitlyn that she's not ready and basically he's going to be back for her, but he's got to do some other things first it seems to properly recharge and be able to transfer much more power for the next time and so then we go over to Star Labs and this is the scene that I was talking about with Frost where she basically volunteers to become the anti-death storm because of their powers both working to do with cold fusion so Frost is going to go after death storm it's going to be an interesting fight and I really can't wait to see that at the end however the final scene of the episode is super interesting and very mysterious so Iris is kind of walking around her apartment, she kind of hears something, she's not sure what's going on, the camera is all canted in weird angles, and then suddenly out of nowhere, Eddie Thorne appears. Now we knew Eddie was going to return but we didn't know in what form, and we've been previously told that Eddie was in fact going to come back but in a different form. Apparently they revealed what Eddie is doing actually in the trailer for next week's episode. I haven't watched it as of right now and I don't intend to watch it because I kind of don't want to get spoiled because this was an interesting cliffhanger and I can't wait to see how it plays out next week. But yeah, he shows up, he's creepily smiling and it's like nothing has happened, plus he looks like a little bit possessed. So I believe this is something to do with Iris's time sickness. 
maybe he's just you know been shot forward in time and maybe this is just a fragment of Iris's imagination or maybe it is the real Eddie we'll have to wait and see but it's great to have him back so that about does it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did please be sure to leave a like and a comment it really helps out the channel also subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any future videos and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video but for now i'll catch you guys later goodbye I see red.